Kari Gruber. Thank you, Kari. Everybody still having a good time? Yeah? All right. Don't forget to get a drink. You have two lovely bartenders tonight, Eva and Chadwick. And since they're lovely, you have to tip them. Let's keep it going with uh, the next rider. You might be familiar with her. She was part of Red uh, Light last month. She is a girl of many talents. She is a singer, songwriter, musician, and poet. She leads two bands, Prairie Dog and Make Make. Make some noise for Make Make, yeah. She's currently working on a new record for Make Make and a book of short stories. She has a master's in poetry from San Francisco State, and we are now going to listen to some of her poems. Please welcome Sarah Beth Nelson. <laughs> dream about you. You kissed me, your body pressed against mine. After the kiss, there was a tiny note folded on my tongue. I think maybe there's something you want to tell me. How the night was, how the night is one. We are tired, not ravaged, bent low like mountainside trees, hoarding our bottles of sorrows, guilty that God might be watching. We learn how to confess to the schizophrenic heavens, hot hearts sheltered in flesh, burning with midnight, trampled by dawn. You rise from your grave and dance me, laughing to the door. Do what you said, draw me in. You said, no rain in the desert. I asked you to tell me the color of your eyes, a blue discussion. Imagine oil on water, on cement, at midday. You said, wrap yourself around me. A tremor sent the metronome skidding off the shelf. You said, whispering very close to my lips, wait. Wait. There can only be one first time. I read the words on your inner arm, let you lick confusion from my tongue, brought you to the birthplace of breath. Sing it again, you said, covering my mouth with yours. <laughs> Mostly, it is hard to get started. When we stood on the big hill above the house, I had some perspective. The cabin we lived in was small. We were much too big to fit inside. Waving with the grass, we ran down the hill, shrinking as we descended. That way, by the time we got to the door, we were the right size. The black walnut above us towering as it should. Now, imagine, if you will, just like, you know, some actors, it's very dark, maybe some black turtlenecks. I'm not really sure. I'm going to try this one out. <laughs> the porch light moon. Man. I think of the options and realize none of them fit. So, yes. I probably will die alone. Woman, it's dark here, dark and starry. Man, I laugh, but I'm scared. I miss something. I think the part where you become satisfied when you can just be. 
woman. Contentment is the enemy. Man, I am selfish. Woman, someone gave me a jar filled with tiny white lights. In the middle, if you look close, you can see that there is a man standing on a piece of wood surrounded by lights. It might be an abominable snowman. I'm not sure. I feel like him out here with all the stars and the porch light moon. Man, it, it isn't untrue that I want to be there with them. That was my home too. I wish I could go there, lie down on the couch and sleep for a while with the two of them moving around me. Woman, have you ever watched somebody when they're sleeping? Not just looked at them, but really fucking stared? You wonder so hard what's going on in their mind, what they see. Their eyelids flutter and their chest goes up and down. You feel so close to their thoughts, so close to communicating just by looking, but really, they're a million miles away in another universe the whole time. Man. Yeah. <laughs> Woman. Is it the abominable snowman? I mean, is there only one, or is it a species? Are they endangered? Or is it more like the Incredible Hulk, where there's just the one? I never thought about that before. Yeah. Man. It's like Bigfoot, only white. You know, a species that mostly lives in a certain area, not just one. They're the mountain Bigfoot. They live in the Himalayas, I think. Woman. Oh. Man. Do you want to change your mind? I mean, is there any part of you that wants to do that? Woman. I don't know. No. I look into my life, and it doesn't make sense. I walked out here in all this blackness. I don't know any other way to be. I can't change now. Man, you don't want to change? Woman, no. Man, will you regret it? Woman, yes. <laughs> Postscript. The next time you pull a snake out of a swimming pool, think of me. When you wake at three in the morning to kill the scorpion in your sink, think of me. When you fuck in the high desert and your ears crackle with insect wings and your spine is lightning, think of me. I know when you sweat, it starts at the back of your neck. So I begin there. Come back. There's no other way to stop this thinking. It's your fault. All those stars, all those white stars, all those stupid stars. This is my last one. I tried to write something in the theme called tight ropes. <coughs> I am bound to you by what we create together. Night birds and sweet fruit, tangled cypress and calligraphy, whole calendars and stacks waiting to be burned, noon and autumn and melody, bound by everything we destroy and what happens next. I am bound to you like a mower to the green beneath it, slicing through warm grass. We are the violence and the mystery and the scent of blood. I can't tell which set of blades I am. I am bound to you like lightning flower blossoms to the skin of the struck, who stands stunned and stammering, aglow and temporarily blind. I am bound to you as the waters of Atlantic and Pacific are bound, making love against cliffs at Cape Horn and in the Panama Canal's deep channels, washing in and out of each other, continually becoming one. Thank you.